we have learned what the null space and the column space of a matrix are, and we know that we will need those later on in linear algebra and in other courses. We also know how we can determine whether a vector is in null A or in call A. But now we would like to describe those subspaces. Previously, we have seen how we can describe a subspace efficiently. We use a basis for that. So in order to describe null A and call A for a given matrix, we would like to give a basis. But how can we find a basis for null A and call A? Let us look into null A first. In this video, you will learn how to find a basis of null A. Here we have a matrix A. My question is, how can we find a basis for the null space of A? Well, first we are going to find null A itself. We know a vector x is in null A if and only if A times x equals 0. So, for which vectors x do we have A times x equals 0? Well, we can solve this equation because it's an equation of the form AX is B, which means that we need an augmented matrix. We s take A, we augment it with 0, and we can solve this linear system using row reduction. So we have our A, we put our A again, we augment it with zeros, and we will solve this linear system. So first we do minus 2 over here, then we get well, we copy the first row, of course, we leave the first row as it is. Second row becomes minus 2 plus 2 equals 0, minus 4 plus 3 equals minus 1, minus 6 plus 4 equals minus 2, minus 8 plus 5 equals minus 3, and minus 10 plus 6 equals minus 4. And then we have the second row. Uh, then let's clean up some mess. Add the second row twice to the first row, leave the second row unchanged. Uh, we keep the 1, we get a 0, we get a minus 1, minus 6 plus 4 equals minus 2, and minus 8 plus 5 equals minus 3. And then we are over here, and uh, let's go all the way to reduce echelon form, multiply the second row by minus 1, and there we have our reduced echelon form of the augmented matrix. And then we can write down the solution of this linear system. We have uh, two pivots. So we have two equations, five unknowns, which means we have three free variables. Let's call those C3, C4, and C5. So let's take the uh, variables without the pivots as free variables. So C3, C4, and C5 are free. And then we can write the parametric vector form. For example, f uh, uh, we have C2 equals minus 2C3, minus 3C4, minus 4C5. That's the second row over there. And C1 equals C3 plus 2 C3, 4 plus 3 C5, which is the first row over here. So we find our parametric vector form of the solution, x, and we can write it as C3 times the vector u plus C4 times the vector v plus C5 times the vector w. Just to avoid copying all those large vectors again and again, we introduce u, v, and w. So now we know, we solved ax equals 0, and we see that x is of the form c3 times u plus c4 times v plus c5 times w. So that means that x is a linear combination of u, v, and w. So x is in the null space of A, if and only if x is a linear combination of u, v, and w. That means that the null space of A itself it's a set of all linear combinations of u, v, and w. So it means that the null space of the matrix A is a span of u, v, and w. If x is in the null space of A, that means that x has to be a linear combination of those three, which means that it uh, is in the span. And conversely, if x is in the span, then it's a linear combination of u, v, and w. And then you know automatically that ax equals 0, so x is a null A. So x is an element of null A if and only if in the span of u, v, and w, which means that the null space of A is a span of u, v, and w. So now we can write null space of A, a subspace, also as a span. Now we were looking for a basis. Well, a basis is an independent set that spans a subspace. So we would like to write basis null A equals 
u v w in this case, because u v and w span the null space of A. Question is, of course, is it is it independent? The basis has to be independent. Well, fortunately, by this construction, this set over here is always independent. Because why is that? Well, look at the factors u, v, and w over here. We have a one at the last factor, w, and zeros over there and over there, which means that you can never get the last factor in terms of the first two factors because of the one over here. You cannot get a one on the last position uh, by mixing the factors u and v. A similar argument holds for v due to the one over here and the zeros over there, and the one over here for u and the zeros over there for v and w, which means that you cannot get u as in a combination of v and w. But those ones correspond to all those three variables over here, the, the original problem. So it means that by construction, those factors you will find when solving a is equal to zero, taking the three variables, will always be independent. So first conclusion is direct, is obvious. The independence also is automatically satisfied by the way you compute your factors u, v, and w over here. So that's nice. And you can immediately conclude that the base of null a is u, v, and w. Well, if you want to be completely sure, of course, you can uh, uh, check their independence as a last step. Now, a final question to you. We are always talking over a basis. A basis is not a new, unique. So it may be possible to find another basis for null a. Can you find another basis for null a? Well, curious to see it. Please uh, show it in the form just below this video.